Welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo, and today we're looking at the 11th set in the Icons of the Realms line of pre-painted miniatures. This is Dungeon of the Mad Mage. This set was released in March 2019. I was expecting it to be full of monsters based on the fact that this is a dungeon crawl, but actually this set comes with a lot of generic humanoids, player characters, and a lot of uh, very specific NPCs for this adventure. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Flumps are mysterious jellyfish-like creatures who float through the underdark, making little flump sounds from the jets of air that propel them around. They faintly glow with a color that reflects their current mood. They are highly intelligent, telepathic, and sensitive beings who feed off the psionics of other beings, so you may find them near colonies of mind flayers, abolis, or gith. A flump has a challenge rating of 1 8th and is found in the Monster Manual. Thugs are generic NPCs who attempt to intimidate and dominate others with force. They have pack tactics, which enables them to get advantage when they team up on someone. They can multi-attack with a mace and have a heavy crossbow for long-range attacks. A thug has a challenge rating of one half and can be found in the basic rules. A veteran is another generic NPC. They are generally professional fighters, like retired soldiers, now serving as mercenaries or guards. They're heavily armored and can multi-attack with a long sword and a short sword. They also carry a heavy crossbow. A veteran has a challenge rating of three and can be found in the basic rules. A flying sword is a magically animated sword that fights independently. Other animated weapons exist in the world, but animated swords are certainly the most common. It has blind sight and a hovering speed of 50. This could also be used in a pinch for a cleric spiritual weapon. A flying sword has a challenge rating of one quarter and can be found in the basic rules. Tresums are winged cats who are frequently taken as pets by arcane magic users. They behave more or less like a normal house cat if normal house cats could fly. They are immune to poison and have the ability to detect whether a substance is poisonous by tasting, touching, or smelling it. They can also see invisible items and creatures within 60 feet of them. A tressum has a challenge rating of zero and can be found in Storm King's Thunder. Grungs are arrogant, aggressive, frog-like creatures frequently found in the treetops of tropical locations. They have a rigid caste system based on the color of their skin. Green grungs are the warriors, hunters, and laborers. Blue is the color of the artisans. Purple is the color of the administrators and commanders. Red grungs are the scholars and magic users. Orange grungs are elite warriors, and gold grungs are the highest ranking leaders. They have poisonous skin and typically attack with daggers. A grung has a challenge rating of one quarter and can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Grungs are found in Tomb of Annihilation. The Battlemaster is a fighter subclass. They are a scholar of war, well-versed in strategy, tactics, and the theory of battle. At third level, the Battlemaster learns maneuvers that are employed using what's called superiority dice, which are D8s. You start with four superiority dice and gain one more at seventh and 15th level. You learn three maneuvers at third level and two additional ones at seventh, 10th, and 15th level. Maneuvers allow you to give allies extra attacks, disarm enemies, draw aggro from foes, increase your reach, frighten targets, parry attacks, and much more. There are 16 different maneuvers. At 7th level, you can also study and learn facts about your enemies, and at 18th level, your superiority dice become d12s. The Battlemaster subclass can be found in the Player's Handbook. Intellect devourers roam the Underdark at the command of Mind Flayers and feed on the intelligence of sentient creatures. They can climb inside their victims' bodies, gaining control and gaining their memories. They use their puppet host to lure unsuspecting victims into Mind Flayer traps. Intellect devourers are more dangerous for a low-level party than their challenge rating suggests, as they can reduce a target's intelligence to zero with two good rolls. This effect requires high-level magic to reverse, like a Greater Restoration spell. An Intellect Devourer has a challenge rating of 2 and can be found in the Monster Manual. Clerics of the Grave Domain respect the line between life and death. They seek to destroy those who corrupt the natural order of things, those who create the undead or desecrate sacred places. 
They help lost spirits and ease the suffering of the dying. They can also help to delay death for the deserving. They gain grave domain spells such as false life, gentle repose, revify, and raise dead. At level one, they can sense undead and can use the maximum possible roll when giving hit points to unconscious creatures and gain the spare the dying cantrip. At second level, they can make a creature vulnerable to the next attack that hits. At sixth level, they can negate a critical hit suffered by an ally nearby. At eighth level, their damage dealing cleric cantrips become more powerful. And at 17th level, they can automatically tap into the departing soul of an enemy to heal an ally. The Grave Domain was introduced in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Shadows are undead creatures who prey on good-aligned people who have hidden away their selfish and impure thoughts to the darkness. As the shadows drain the strength of their victims, their victims' own shadows begin to darken and move their own volition. Should a shadow kill a creature by bringing its strength score to zero, the victim's shadow breaks free and becomes a new shadow creature a few hours later. The way the shadow mini is designed, you could place another small-sized mini on top of it if you so desired. A shadow has a challenge rating of one half and can be found in the basic rules. A rogue inquisitive is a private investigator of the D&D world, adept at reading clues, sussing out intentions, and armed with a robust mastery of lore. At level three, they treat any roll below a seven as an eight on an insight check to detect lies. They can also use a bonus action to spot hidden enemies and creatures. They can also make an insight check to potentially use sneak attack damage against an enemy they otherwise would not be able to by learning its movements and weaknesses. At ninth level, they can sacrifice some movement to gain advantage on perception and investigation checks. At 13th level, they're able to discern when an effect is trying to trick them visually, as if by illusions or shape changing. Finally, at 17th level, when they're able to apply their sneak attack damage with an insight check, the sneak attack becomes more powerful. Gnomes, being naturally curious and intelligent, make good inquisitives, particularly forest gnomes who also have more dexterity. The Inquisitive subclass was introduced in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. According to ancient texts, oozes are the scattered fragments or offspring of the demon lord Jubliex, who is the only one who can control them and imbue them with intelligence. Otherwise, they rely purely on instinct. A gray ooze is stone turned to liquid by chaos, which slithers through the underdark like a snake. Like many oozes, they can corrode non-magical metal, making them particularly annoying for a low-level party who may not be able to afford a new set of plate armor. A gray ooze has a challenge rating of one half and can be found in the basic rules. Berserkers are another type of generic NPC. They are the more uncivilized, battle-hungry warriors who roam the countryside in war parties. Clad in hide armor, they attack with a great axe and can make reckless attacks, which means they attack with advantage, while allowing attacks against them to also be made with advantage. There is a male and female variant for the Berserker. A Berserker has a challenge rating of 2 and can be found in the basic rules. There is no stat block for a veteran leader. The most appropriate stat block for this mini may be that of a knight. Knights have the parry and leadership abilities. The leadership ability grants nearby allies an additional 1d4 on attack rolls and saving throws. They can use this ability at the beginning of combat in lieu of an attack, and it lasts for a minute. A knight has a challenge rating of 3 and can be found in the basic rules. Similarly, there is no stat block for a thug leader. You could use the stat block of a bandit captain and replace our dagger ability with a heavy crossbow. All of these generic minis can certainly be used as player characters or named NPCs in your adventures as well. A bandit captain has a challenge rating of 2 and can be found in the basic rules. Grung elite warriors have authority over all lower grungs, which includes all the colors other than gold. Like all grungs, the elite warrior has poisonous skin and can make great standing leaps. The elite warrior attacks with poisoned daggers at short and long range, and is also armed with a short bow with poisoned arrows. They can also make a churring noise, which can stun enemies. The Grung Elite Warrior has a challenge rating of 2 and can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Like Frankenstein's monster, flesh golems are stitched together from an assortment of humanoid body parts and imbued with great strength. It's protected by powerful enchantments, which deflect most spells and weapon attacks. 
When near death, they may go berserk, attacking whoever or whatever is within reach. They can only be calmed by their creator. A flesh golem has a challenge rating of 5 and can be found in the basic rules. Piercers are the larval form of ropers. They live on the walls and ceilings of caves and caverns and blend in with the natural rocks. They can see, but they often rely on noise and heat, dropping onto unsuspecting cavers who pass underneath. Depending on how far they fall, they can inflict a significant amount of damage, but they have no way of attacking after their fall, and they must slowly make their way back up the cave walls if they want to escape danger or attack again. A piercer has a challenge rating of one half and can be found in the monster manual. Flins are the name given to the leader of Knoll Warbands. They have a special connection with the Knoll god Yinogu and use their demonic insight to lead their warband to vulnerable prey. Flins lead the charge into battle armed with a magical flail. The Flind makes an attack roll with each of the three aspects of the flail, the first of which can inflict madness, the second psychic damage, and the last paralysis. It also has a Lombo to attack anyone who attempts to flee. A Flind has a challenge rating of 9, which puts it on par with a Fire Giant, and it can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. When a mortal is undeservedly slain before its time, it may claw its way back to life to exact vengeance against its adversary. It reclaims its own body if available, or that of another dead humanoid nearby if it must, becoming an undead creature. It then has exactly one year to exact its revenge before crumbling to dust. If its foe is too powerful, it may seek allies to assist it. The Revenant always knows the distance and direction to its foe. Revenants generally attack with their fists, which do extra damage against their sworn enemy. Their foe may also become paralyzed and frightened when they finally encounter the Revenant. A Revenant has a challenge rating of 5 and can be found in the Monster Manual. Burr hags generally reside in snowy, mountainous regions, using their weather-controlling abilities to cause suffering to nearby settlements. She augments her power with her gnarled staff, which she can also ride like a broom. She is attracted to cruel, selfish acts, which are brought about by the cold. She may use her abilities to create conditions in which the town folk turn against each other in the bitter cold for food, clothing, and warmth. If she kills a foe in combat, she may immediately begin to rend the body apart and feast upon it, potentially instilling madness in anyone nearby who witnesses the vile act. A burr hag has a challenge rating of 7, which puts her on par with a young black dragon, and her stat block can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Paladins who swore an oath of vengeance set out to right a grievous harm caused by an evildoer. They care more about exacting their vengeance than maintaining their own purity. At third level, when channeling divinity, they can frighten enemies or use a vow of enmity to gain advantage in their attack rolls. They gain Oath of Vengeance spells including Bane, Hunter's Mark, Haste, Banishment, Dimension Door, Whole Person, and Scrying. At seventh level, when they hit a creature fleeing past them with an opportunity attack, they can immediately move half their speed. At 15th level, when a creature under their Vow of Enmity attacks them, they can use their reaction to strike back. At 20th level, they can assume the form of an Angelic Avenger. Wings sprout from their back, allowing them to fly and potentially frighten enemies around them. While this mini is supposed to represent a human, the red skin makes it appear more like a tiefling, though it's missing a tail. The Oath of Vengeance can be found in the player's handbook. Storm sorcerers are imbued with the power of elemental air. They're often employed on ships to help create favorable weather conditions and drive off potential threats. At level 1, Storm Sorcerers can speak and read Primordial and create powerful gusts of wind when casting spells, allowing them to fly short distances. At level 6, they gain resistance to lightning and thunder damage and deal such damage to those around them when casting lightning and thunder spells. They also learn to subtly control the weather around them. At level 14, they can deal a retaliatory lightning strike to those who hit them with a melee attack, potentially knocking them away. At level 18, they're immune to lightning and thunder damage, and gain the ability to fly and grant the same to others. The Storm Sorcerer Origin was introduced in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Froghemoths are enormous, otherworldly predators who live in swamps and bogs. They often hide under the water with only their eye stalks protruding above the surface, looking for potential prey. They then erupt and grapple their foes with their tentacles. 
They can yank foes toward them with their tongue and then attempt to eat them. Bullywogs treat frog hemoths as gods, offering them food and sacrifices, and protecting them against harm. A frog hemoth has a challenge rating of 10, which puts it on par with an aboleth and a young red dragon, and it can be found in Bolo's Guide to Monsters. Otto is a fairy dragon character in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Even elder fairy dragons are typically house cat sized creatures. They are notorious but well meaning pranksters. They often stay invisible as they stalk the target of their mischief, giving themselves away only with the occasional unstifled giggle. Their breath attack instills euphoria, causing targets to move randomly or stand still in a trance like state. Otto has a challenge rating of 3 and uses modified stats of an older fairy dragon, which can be found in the monster manual. Bahir are underdark dwelling cavern predators, resembling a combination of centipede and crocodile. Their plentiful legs allow them to reach otherwise inaccessible places with ease. Storm giants created the original Bahirs as weapons against the dragons, and they retain their natural hatred for dragon kind. They can attack with an extremely powerful lightning breath, wrap themselves around foes constricting the life from them, or swallow enemies whole. A Bahir has a challenge rating of 11, which puts it on par with an Afridi and a Rimaraz, and it can be found in the basic rules. Skeladders are constructs created by a particular NPC in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. They resemble and attack like giant scorpions. They are controlled by whoever wears the corresponding magic ring. They can multi-attack with their claws and stinger tail. A Skeladder has a challenge rating of 8 and can be found in Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. When a dead beholder is brought back by necromancy, it becomes a beholder zombie. They lack the intellect, memory, and abilities of their former selves. They only have four eye stalk abilities and lack their anti-magic cone and legendary actions. While still formidable foes, they are much more vulnerable in their undead form. Beholder zombies should be contrasted with death tyrants, which will be described later. A beholder zombie has a challenge rating of five and can be found in the monster manual. A named Beholder Zombie NPC appears in Dungeon of the Mad Mage with a modified stat block. Mural the Misshapen is an NPC in Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. He transformed into a half-scorpion spellcasting monstrosity. He is a 13th level spellcaster with wizard spells and legendary attacks and resistances. He can attack with his longsword and stinger tail. He has a challenge rating of 13, which puts him on par with a Beholder and can be found in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. As a note, this mini's name is misspelled on the base. Garistros are huge, unintelligent demons who have the appearance and abilities of minotaurs. They can easily navigate a labyrinth in pursuit of prey. They're frequently employed by more powerful demons as living siege engines and pets. They can make powerful attacks with their fists and hooves, and can gore foes if they get a running start. They're resilient against physical and magical attacks and have a hefty constitution, making them difficult to bring down. A Garistro has a challenge rating of 17, which puts it on par with an adult red dragon and can be found in the monster manual. A skeleton can be brought to animated life by strong necromantic magic or by the presence of strong corrupting evil. If brought to life by a spellcaster, a skeleton will obey its orders, though the skeleton retains no connection to its past life. It can wear armor, wield weapons, and perform complex tasks if given specific, detailed instructions. Minotaur skeletons continue to use their charge and gore attacks, but lose their ability to perfectly recall the path of their travel. A minotaur skeleton has a challenge rating of 2 and can be found in the basic rules. An archmage is a powerful, generic spellcaster. They are 18th level spellcasters who have the ability to cast Disguise Self and Invisibility on themselves at will. They have powerful wizard spells prepared, including Time Stop, Mind Blank, Teleport, and Globe of Invulnerability. They can be of any alignment. The good ones may counsel kings and queens, while evil ones pursue power and potentially lich them. They typically employ apprentice wizards and protect their sanctums with powerful wards and guardians. An Archmage has a challenge rating of 12, which puts it on par with an Aranyes and an Arcanaloth, and it can be found in the basic rules. Necromancers are wizards who specialize in life, death, and undeath. 
Some use their knowledge to track and dispose of undead creatures, while others attempt to raise the dead for their own nefarious purposes. The generic necromancer is a 12th level spellcaster who has wizard spells prepared such as Circle of Death, Cloud Kill, Blight, Animate Dead, Bestow Curse, and Vampiric Touch. When a necromancer kills a creature using a spell, they can regain health. A necromancer has a challenge rating of 9 and can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Desmir and her twin brother Zalthar are NPCs in Dungeon of the Mad Mage who use the stat block of a Death Knight. When a paladin falls from grace and dies before being able to atone for its crimes, a death magic may take hold and bring the paladin back as an undead death knight. They retain their ability to cast divine spells, but can no longer heal themselves or others. They often marshal other undead and fiends under their control. Death knights continue to reanimate after being defeated until they have finally atoned for their mortal sins. A death knight has a challenge rating of 17, and can be found in the Monster Manual. Tanarux are orcs who have been corrupted and strengthened with demonic power given by Baphomet. They are created when orcs, or evil humanoids who control a tribe of orcs, turn to abyssal magic to increase their power. Baphomet shares a secret ritual which turns an unborn orc into the stronger, more aggressive Tanarux. They are so volatile that they often have to be caged when not in battle with enemies of the tribe. They have magical resistance and can respond to attacks in kind and with advantage. A Tanaruk has a challenge rating of 5 and can be found in Volo's Guide to Monsters. Karestra Delving Stone is an NPC in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. She uses the stat block of a vampire with an added spellcasting ability. Vampires in 5th edition bear much in common with common vampire folklore. They drink the blood of the living, abhor sunlight, turn into bats and mist, do not cast shadows or reflections, and cannot enter a residence without permission. They are formidable foes who are extremely difficult to bring to their final end. Karestra is a vampire cleric of the evil goddess Shar, whose domain includes darkness and the Underdark. The Karestra Mini carries the holy symbol of Shar in her hand. Vampires have a challenge rating of 13 and are found in the basic rules. Arcturia is a high-level NPC from Dungeon of the Mad Mage. She is a master of transmutation magic. I'll leave you to discover more about her in the adventure, including which modified stat block she uses. This mini can also be used as a fey NPC, perhaps even an arc fey patron for a warlock. Halister Blackcloak is the Mad Mage, the master of the Undermountain, and the big bad of this adventure. I'll leave you to discover his motives and abilities. Halister is standing on a small platform, which allows his sword spell effect to be detachable. No glue is required, and it slides in and out quite easily. It's not clear what spell Halister is using here. He has Cloud of Daggers on his spell list, but that wouldn't be centered around him. There's a cantrip called Sword Burst, which is not on his spell list, but would match the spell effect pretty well. Honestly, this effect is probably just artistic license. Alistair Blackcloak has a challenge rating of 23, which puts him on par with Baphomet and a Kraken, and he can be found in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Trobriand is an NPC in Dungeon of the Mad Mage and appears as an Iron Golem with spellcasting abilities. Iron Golems are the mightiest of the typical Golems, with magic resistance, powerful fist attacks, and enormous swords which can reach creatures 10 feet away. They're also able to exhale a cloud of poisonous gas in a 15-foot cone. Trobriand has a challenge rating of 22, which is on par with an Ancient Green Dragon, and uses the modified stat block of an Iron Golem, which can be found in the basic rules. An Iron Golem has a challenge rating of 16. Rimarazes lurk beneath the Arctic ice, waiting for prey to pass overhead. They have adapted to the cold by generating enormous amounts of heat within their bodies, though they can lower their internal temperature to keep from melting the ice and snow as they burrow under the surface. Their heated bodies cause harm to those who strike them within melee range, and they can swallow enemies whole and slowly digest them over time. A Rimaraz has a challenge rating of 11 and can be found in the basic rules. Baylors are high-ranking demons who generally serve as generals in demonic armies. Baylors are fearsome in battle with magic resistance, a fiery aura, and powerful whip and longsword attacks. They can also teleport to the back lines of battle to attack vulnerable spellcasters and ranged attackers, 
while their soldiers keep the frontline fighters occupied. When killed, they explode, dealing tremendous amounts of damage to anyone nearby. A Baylor has a challenge rating of 19 and can be found in the basic rules. A death tyrant is formed when a beholder's dreams take it beyond its normal madness to a place where it exists outside the reach of death. Its flesh slakes off, leaving a naked skull, where its eye stalks once were, now float eerie spectral eyes. Its anti-magic cone becomes a negative energy cone, preventing those in its zone of influence from regaining health and transforming anyone who dies there into a zombie under the Death Tyrant's control. Unlike a zombie beholder, the Death Tyrant retains its intellect and actually has a higher armor class than a standard beholder. A Death Tyrant has a challenge rating of 14, which puts it on par with an adult black dragon, and it can be found in the Monster Manual. A regular beholder has a challenge rating of 13. The paint jobs on this set are pretty good. The thug minis aren't flashy, but the attention to detail and color selection is very well done. That mini is going to hit my table a lot. My favorite paint job of the set is the Beholder Zombie. The flesh looks rotten and decaying, and the eyes look like they're dying from the outside in. You can almost smell the death on it. There isn't anything in here that has a laughably bad paint job, as was the case in some of the previous sets. This set came with a few more detached pieces than normal for me. Two of the veterans had detached arms. One of the tieflings had a broken tail. A flesh golem was partially bent off his base. A few others had to be resecured onto their bases as well. Most of the parts weren't broken exactly, but seemingly not glued well enough. It's also always interesting to see what they choose to include in a set. Some minis are clearly part of the adventure, some selections are curious as they don't appear in the current adventure. You can see that some choices are to fill in holes from previous sets. The Froghemoth and the Grung, for example, are to round out Tomb of Annihilation, and the Tressum is from Storm King's Thunder. The Burr Hag hasn't been in any official adventure to date, but they do seem to be trying to include a hag in almost every set these days. There's also no Baylor in this adventure, but no one is complaining about getting a Baylor mini. Some folks are disappointed in its size, though canonically Baylors are 12 feet tall and the Garistros are 20 feet tall, so the scale is about right. I do appreciate getting more generic thugs, barbarians, and veterans that can be used as common NPCs or even player character minis, but I'm surprised this is the set they decided to include them in. Dungeon of the Mad Mage probably has the longest list of monsters of any 5th edition adventure so far, so I was expecting this set to be very monster heavy. There were certainly some notable omissions. Mad Mage would have been a good set for some new Gith minis. A Lava Child would have been a creepy and amazing inclusion. I think we'll probably see a Lava Child mini in one of the upcoming sets. It would have been a good opportunity to add to my Were Creature party with a Were Bat. I also really want to see an Aboleth mini, but the Salt Marsh set may cover that. So that's Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I always hope that we can give you a good look at all the minis in this set so you can make a decision based on your personal needs at your gaming table. Overall, I thought this was a good set, uh, though not quite the set I expected it to be. On the disappointing side, I was sad to see the return of the Invisibles. We haven't had them in the last two sets, and so I thought maybe we were done with them for good, but they're back. Also, there were some repeats of some creatures that had appeared fairly recently in the Icons line. We had new Intellect Devourers. We had a new Flind. But on the plus side, they included a lot of fun creatures. Uh, you can't go wrong with a Tressum and a Flump. Also, there were some creatures that are very good, I think, for storytelling purposes. I'm always happy to see hags in these sets because hags make great villains for story arcs. Not just a single encounter, but you can make whole stories around them. Also, fun creatures like the Baylor and the Frog Hemoth are in this set. And you can always use a Remoraz, especially if you're doing anything in the northern part of the Sword Coast. Uh, they also included a lot of player character options. Uh, a lot of them are very interesting, and a lot of them are based on the art in some of the previous 5th edition books, like the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide and even the Player's Handbook. And I always get a little thrill about seeing some of those classic art creatures brought, brought to life, so to speak. And I always think that a great way of introducing people to the game and having them create their first character is just to lay out on your gaming table a lot of potential player character option minis and let them choose the one that they gravitate to and then start building up a character based on their mini. So I'm always happy to get more options for them for that. So overall, 
an interesting line, uh, a lot of fun options. It's always good to have veterans and thugs and creatures you can use on almost any of your games. So I hope you liked the video. You can always check in the video description for updates, corrections, and links we may talk about. And you can leave questions and comments and concerns in the uh, comments area below. Otherwise, stay tuned for the review of the premium figure from this line, which is Hallister's Lab. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time on The Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.